I was recently talking to one of my friendly competitors and he's asking me, why are you accepting escrow payments for real estate transactions for termite treatments? And I just looked at him and said, why aren't you? Welcome back, Jimmy Adjust Termites. The question presented to me was, why do we accept escrow payments for real estate transactions for termite treatments? You know, it's not like I don't try to go get credit cards and checks if I can, but a lot, there's a lot of business in the real estate market that if you take and you build escrow, that you can go ahead and get that business, whereas other companies don't. So there's a lot of realtors that only search for those kind of companies, and we want to be one of those companies. We want to be the company that people come to and we can take checks, we can take credit cards, but if they need to, we can go ahead and do bill escrow. Now with that, I have some certain guidelines I work with on those. What I want to do is I want to make sure I go ahead and get all the information on the transaction, you know, the buyer's information, of course, the seller's information, the real estate information, all the different agents involved, um, and also the escrow information. That means the escrow officer, the escrow company, the phone number for the escrow officer, their email address, and most importantly, the COE date or close of escrow date. That tells me when we're getting paid, when they're cutting a check, and when I should roughly expect it once it's been ma mailed to me. So that's very important. But the seller's information is very important. Traditionally, the seller is the one who's responsible for payment. So what happens is you want to have their contact information, name, phone number, if they're living at a remote address, other than where they're at now, the house is at, their uh, email address, and their cell phone, etc. What we want to do is we want to make contact with them and I prepared a simple little form to send over to them by DocuSign, basically saying, hey, they know they're responsible for the payment, and they're signing here and giving credit card information as a backup, just in case escrow fails or falls through, which it does occasionally. Then what we'll go ahead and do is we'll take and contact the seller and have the pre-authorization form to charge their credit card, and just let them know that we're going to go ahead and charge their credit card since the escrow fell through. This way we get paid. So we really try to minimize the risk involved with uh, when dealing with escrows that, of a falling through and not getting our money. But the key is to keep on top of it. I want to show you a simple method that we've developed in our, so our software system. Uh, we use WorkWave, formerly known as PestPack, and just a simple little way of making a couple of little annotations next to the uh, name on the account that really keep track of escrow. So we're going to cut through to the computer right now. Old owner. Now you notice this asterisk here. The first time we contact the escrow agent, we'll go ahead and put an asterisk on there. And then that's where we're seeking information like close of escrow, confirming that they've received the invoice, the termite treatment documents, and we're also asking for when the close of escrow date is. So this is just the first initial time we do that. If we have to go ahead and um, send multiple emails to get that same information, we'll put additional asterisks. This way we know the level of uh, contact we've had with the customer. Um, usually it's just one star like this. We'll go ahead and email them, just out, ask him to confirm that they've received the documents, they received the invoice with the actual dollar amount of the treatment that's owed, and also ask them when the close of escrow is. This way, um, all the information is there, documents, invoice, and close of escrow. And when they reply back on the email, we'll go ahead and copy and paste that into our notes section of our, our account. But then we also take and we go ahead and edit and update the information here. So now we know the close of escrow is 8-7. This way, when I run some kind of accounts receivable report, I can look down the entire list and I can see when these when um, I'm expected to get payments roughly. So you figure if they put it in the mail on this date, two, three days, it should be in my mailbox. So it's a great, easy uh, way to go ahead and just keep track of when payments are coming in. If the date's passed by a week or more, then I can go ahead and contact that same escrow agent, see if there's been a change of date for the escrow, if it's canceled out or anything like that. Um, and then it's just... It just makes it very easy to manage the accounts, especially when you're doing, you know, 50 or 100 or 200 of these accounts. It's uh, really easy to take care of. A final thought on building escrows. I've seen a lot of companies and what they do is they do bill escrow, but what they do is they put a separate charge, like a finance charge, an extra 50 bucks because they have to wait for the payment for 30 days or 60 days. Um, and they actually build out on a separate line item, another, you know, just saying finance charge or billing fee or something along that line. I personally do not recommend that because what happens is that is going to turn off future business from other realtors. They see that you're, you're charging more to build escrow. Now, if you want to get more money when you do the quote initially, go ahead and build it up a little bit for that. 
but do not break it out on a separate line item charge um, that people can read and detect because it's kind of an, it's an, essentially a negative to go ahead and build an escrow. Um, we all want our money right away. And I understand that, but building the escrow is a way of building your business and to larger volumes than you would by judicial people who just pay you by check or credit card right then and there. So what happens is when you do that, when you set a separate line item charge for the for billing to escrow or finance charge, it really says you do not want to do that and what happens is you're actually penalizing people that pay more money than they might normally pay through your company because you're billing to escrow. It doesn't send a really good vibe or a good way of promoting business. So I highly recommend you don't be one of the companies that do that if you really, really want to expand your business. Escrows are a great way to, to, to go ahead and build business. You just have to stay on top of them, manage them, keep an eye on the dates when the, when the close of escrow is so you make sure your payment's coming down. A lot of this can be all done through emails very, very quickly, and as I pointed out, and, um, but it's a great way to build your business. Thank you again for watching this video on Just Termites. We really appreciate it. Please subscribe and like, share, but most importantly, down below, go ahead and put a comment. Uh, if there's something kind of videos you want to see, you have something on a, a little different way you do escrows, I'd love to hear from you. Feedback is extremely important and uh, getting information out there for everybody to take a look at. I appreciate it very much.